Um, Africans have benefited from their experience with white supremacy. Look at the average life of an African American in the United States. It's far better than any African living in Africa. Really? So slavery was good for them? I, it, look, they benefited from being in a different nation than their own, no doubt. Really? Welcome back to the channel. This topic is one that was discussed when I posted a video about the invisible struggles causing African Americans to leave Africa. And to be honest, it is a subtle unspoken problem in the system that I believe needs to be thrown some light on and for others to share their experiences if indeed it is something noticeable for black international travelers in Ghana and across Africa. Personally, I think this issue of white privilege is more of an institutional rather than a personal set of benefits granted to people who by race resemble the people who dominate the powerful positions in the world. So we find a set of people who have more resources because of the color of their skin, doors are open to them which are not open to other people. And in the United States, white people are more likely to get a housing loan as opposed to black Americans. Black children in school are even likely not to learn in school the contributions of their people in history. History plays a huge role when you want to discuss some of these issues. See, the history of the African continent is marked by centuries of European colonization during which indigenous populations were exploited. It's not surprising you can easily see the lasting impacts of colonialism evident in various aspects of the African society. If you look at this colonial legacy where white colonizers positioned themselves at the top of the social order while cleverly relegating Africans to inferior positions, this has laid the foundation of perception of superiority and inferiority based on skin color. So you can see how white individuals often benefit from inherited privileges linked to historical world social connections and access to opportunities and to open your mind more to some of these advantages which manifest in various forms, you can clearly see better access to education, employment opportunities, healthcare, and legal you know, protections. I mean, African elites, including politicians and wealthy individuals, don't even trust their own country, so they always travel to the West for medical care. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari is back home. Throngs of cheering people lined the streets in Abuja, Nigeria over the weekend, welcoming their president home. The president has spent much of 2017 in Britain, receiving treatment for an undisclosed illness. President Buhari arrived in the capital Saturday from London, where he had spent more than 100 days there under medical care. It was his second medical leave this year. Muhammadu Buhari is not alone when it comes to African leaders opting for foreign medical care. Zimbabwe's President Robert Mugabe has visited Singapore several times for health checks. In Angola, after a prolonged absence, officials confirmed longtime leader Jose Eduardo dos Santos was on one of his regular health checkups in Spain. Benin's President Patrice Talon has had at least two surgeries on recent visits to France. Over the last decade, multiple African leaders have died in office, did so while seeking treatment abroad. One thing I have noticed is the fact that not all white individuals in Africa enjoy these privileges to the same extent. It's just the bias system and implanted perception that often favor them over black Americans and Africans. I saw this video online titled, What Rwandan Girls Think of White Men in Africa? And some of their responses, particularly with one of the ladies, clearly drives home another major factor why whites are treated better. So watch this. So I prefer both. You prefer both. Why? A white man can give you a, a great a child, like but you can have some handsome child or son or daughter something like that. Yeah. But an African man, you know, yeah. you know man, you know, man, you know, uh -huh. In her response, a white man can give her a great child, a handsome child, and you know, that's fine. But there is a major school of thought amongst many females in Africa that a white baby is much better looking. And this mindset is purely driven by the influence of Western culture. Western lifestyle. We see it in our movies, in the toys that, you know, these kids play with, the toys that African kids and black kids play with. Most African children only play with white dolls. And I think these are all a huge contributing factor that reinforces white superiority and contributes to different treatments based on race. And guys, after all is said and done, it is important to realize that not all white individuals in Africa are privileged and not all black Americans or Africans are disadvantaged. Now, there are major factors that play a significant role such as class, such as gender, nationality, and even ethnic intersection with race that shapes an individual's experiences 
and opportunities. I hope you now realize how the injustice in historical events goes a long way to play a huge role in where we are today in the African continent as far as inequalities is concerned. Now, in order to solve some of these issues, we have to start from somewhere. And by doing so, we need to find a way to promote social justice, promote inclusivity, dismantle inequalities in the system. But we can't sit and wait for someone else to do that for us. We must promote equal access to resources and opportunities. We must challenge this attitude of discrimination with some of these, you know, attitudes with his speech and practices. So yeah. you're, you, you're really proud of your racism, aren't you? You're really proud to I'm be proud a bigot. I'm proud to be a white man. You're proud to, that's different from being proud if to be Africans a bigot. If Africans had never existed, world history would be ex almost exactly the same as it is today. Yeah, you just keep Because saying, we are the genius that drives it. Things. You know, I How just, do you deny that? Sorry? How can you really deny that? You're talking nonsense. How am I talking nonsense? You'll if never that, be an Englishman. You don't and get to tell me yeah, I do, what I actually. will be. Because my name's Richard Spencer. So have, <laughs> my and name's Richard Spencer yes. and I approved this message. Yes, and so You're therefore I actually, I actually, I actually, I actually. Because you've got nothing to say. I was looking for someone who could give some intellectual ballast to what's going on in this country in terms of race and in terms of white people. But I found the wrong guy because you mm. don't know what you're talking about. I keep saying that if communication was effective, a lot of what was could have been avoided. So encouraging healthy dialogue and understanding of people's culture and race goes a long way. Well, however you decide to look at it, the issue of white privilege in Africa requires confronting uncomfortable truths about the continent's history and present realities. And as long as we can acknowledge and address these issues, African societies and blacks around the globe can, you know, lean towards a more equitable future where everyone, regardless of race, enjoys equal rights and equal opportunities. My name is your heritage, your traveler and explorer currently exploring Ghana. Like and share the video to encourage the discussion. Share with me your take and experience in terms of how you are treated in Africa and if you have ever been a victim of racial discrimination. Don't forget to subscribe for more travel related content around the world and I'll see you in the next one.